The 4th of July just passed, and I noticed something. Joey Chestnut, the hot dog eating legend, was not allowed to compete in this year's hot dog eating contest. We needed a new star to rise up to the challenge and take his place. But who would eat such a monumental amount of hot dogs? Luckily, I have these 25 candidates from Dark Souls 3, and I know that there are some amongst them who are more than capable to rise to the occasion. For this list, I'll even allow bosses where two or more of them are together to compete together. Now, today's criteria will be this. Appetite, eating technique, sportsmanship, craving for hot dogs, and of course, how many hot dogs they would eat. Now as always, let's hop right in and see who is a glizzy guzzler and who is a hot dog hater. So just like the last tier list, I'm going to go ahead and go through pretty much in the order that the Ashen One meets the bosses, at least in the main game, and then go over the DLC bosses. So to kick things off, we of course have Udix Gunder, where we meet the champion Gunder with the coiled sword through his abdomen and wants to beat up all people who think they could just waltz in and link the first flame. Now, I find that we have to mention that the first and second phase of Gunder, where we have the first phase being just a normal cast iron armored being, and then we get Dark Souled, and he transforms into a giant puss of man and starts opening his mouth and devouring everything whole. Now, of course, for their consumption of hot dogs, that is just excellent. But for the sportsmanship aspect, I find that Gunder would be frowned upon after eating everything in his sight through his giant snake mouth, including his competition's hot dog platters. With all that being said, I find that the second phase of Udix Gunder would eat approximately 350 hot dogs, four tables, nine chairs, and two competitors. Now overall, even though he would smoke the competition, I find that Udix Gunder just doesn't have the sportsmanship after going into his second phase and eating everything. And yes, he is a ritual to see who is strong enough to link the first flame, but I just find that after pulling off a stunt like that, he wouldn't be liked by many. Think of Chick Hicks from Cars. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start off this list by placing Udix Gunder not all the way at the top, but I am going to go ahead and place him into the A tier. Now we move on to Vort of the Boreal Valley, where of course we have to note that Vort is a frenzied beast due to his Ring of Pontiff, as he is a man who is literally walking and fighting on all fours. Vort seems pretty similar to that of Udix Gundir's second phase, being a boss who loves to be violent and swing around and whatnot, but he also doesn't have a huge mouth like Gundir, and may not be able to consume as much, but he would still have a huge hunger. Vort wouldn't worry too much about his technique. He would just cram his mouth with like four or five hot dogs at a time until his throat becomes clogged with the dogs. I think that Vort would eat somewhere around 100 hot dogs in the 10 minute a lot of time and also just swing around at his opponents and such when he thinks they may be catching up to him. Overall, I find Vort to not eat the same amount of glizzies as Gunder, but he still has the same mindset, and therefore I'm going to place Vort of the Boreal Valley a tier below and go ahead and place him into the B tier. We move on to the giant tree with the big old pus balls, the curse rotted great wood. The great wood is just a spirit tree that the undead people of the undead settlement went and ruined by sealing all of their curses into it until it became the grossly thing that the Ashen One fights. Now, a big tree in my mind doesn't seem to care too much about hot dogs, nor the competitive spirit that comes with eating them. I don't think the great wood would have too much craving for really anything besides the glorious sunlight, water, and maybe some more undead curses. Otherwise, it just wants to be worshipped and rest in the corner of its arena until a certain Ashen One gets a little too close to it. I find that the Curse Rotted Greatwood would eat zero hot dogs and instead would just slam them into the ground or slam on them with its wooden posterior. So with all that being said, I'll of course go ahead and place the Curse Rotted Greatwood all the way at the bottom and place it into the F tier. Now we move on to the Crystal Sage located at the Road of Sacrifices. So the Crystal Sage is basically just that. A sage who has delved into and developed crystal magics just like some dragon from long ago named like Seth or something. I immediately think her main strategy would be to use her crystal magic to make those hot dogs into crystal glizzies because it may shatter easier and therefore it could be faster to chew up and swallow at the cost of course of the esophagus being shredded by the hot dog shards. Would the sage have or care to win a hot dog eating contest belt that looks awesome and would be a mantelpiece? I don't think so. She seems too engrossed in her studies. I think that the Crystal Sage would still use her crystallizing technique at the cost of eating those sharp crystal shards and would maybe eat a maximum of like eight crystal hot dogs before she is full or decides that the pain is enough. So there isn't too much going on for the Crystal Sage, but I find her to be at least better than that of the Curse Rotted Great Wood, and therefore I'll place her a tier above and go ahead and place her into the D tier. Up next, we have one of my all-time favorite bosses in the franchise. We have the Abyss Watchers. Now, a major question that I do have to ask is how many of these guys do I count to eat hot dogs? I mean, they literally have an entire army, but they also slay each other as they are corrupted by the Abyss. 
So for this tier list, I'll just include the one that stands on top of it all, or maybe just talk about the second phase where the main watcher absorbs all the power of the other ones. Either way, I think all of that cool Artorius-like sword swinging has to make someone hungry. And of course, I do find that the Abyss Watchers have quite a bit of sportsmanship, as they will literally put down one of their own for the sake of destroying the Abyss. But would they care to really eat hot dogs on a competitive level in front of an entire nation? I don't know. Maybe if the Abyss is fully removed and there's nothing better to do, they'll eat it. But they probably won't care too greatly about how they taste, and they wouldn't care to eat too competitively. The Abyss Watcher would therefore eat more than an average person would, so I'm thinking something like 12 hot dogs or so. And with all that being said, I find that the Abyss Watcher is just okay in a hot dog eating contest, so I'll go ahead and I will place them into the C tier. Royce and the devoted Aldrich enthusiasts are next, aka the Deacons of the Deep. So once again, I have to note, I mean, just look how many of them there are. You beat one up during the fight, and two rise up in its stead. So how many people do I give the Deacons of the Deep? I mean, I think just about any amount of them would be correct. The Deacons and Deacon Royce are simply beings who became corrupted from the prolonged development of dark sorceries, while Aldrich, their master, went out to get some milk, and surprisingly, never returned. The Deacons of course have the numbers, but once again I find that they do not have the competitive spirit. They are just too far gone to really even care about something like nutrition, and do not need all of the vitamins and minerals found within a delicious hot dog. So would they care for the taste of a hot dog? I don't really think so. At least they might be okay with their sportsmanship, but that's really it. I find that the Deacons of the Deep have unlimited potential when it comes to hot dog consumption, but they would all need to get approval from their supervisor Royce. I think like 50 Deacons of the Deep would literally eat 50 hot dogs, just one each, and then just give up. Now with all that being said, I find that the Deacons of the Deep are once again great, but not perfect, and so I'll go ahead and I will give them the A tier. Now we meet the skeletal top half in the abyss, High Lord Wulner. He may be huge, but of course we have a major concern. Wulner is of course one giant skeletal being. And also of concern, he literally is just the top half of the skeletal being. His lower half is who knows where. So we have a moral dilemma that I know all Dark Souls 3 fans have thought of. Does Wulner putting a hot dog in his mouth, chewing and swallowing, and it either falling out of his sides or bottom of the rib cage count as eating? What is this channel about though? giving the benefit of the doubt. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say yes. But of course there is difficulties that comes with that. With no lips, Wilner can't contain the food he chews. With no tongue or esophagus, he has no way to physically swallow without tilting his head back. So I think he can eat, but it would be a trick that takes considerable time and effort to get a hot dog all the way to his rib cage. Besides, he wouldn't care for the competition being a lord and all, nor would he have the good sportsmanship as he literally destroyed other kingdoms just because he was greedy. I think Wilner could eat something like four hot dogs if he takes his time and effort to chew and whatnot. With all that being said, I'm sorry Wilner, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have to place you all the way at the bottom and put you into the F tier. We move on to once again another demon born from the fan favorite Beta Chaos, the old Demon King, who is now one of the oldest beings at the time the Ashen One extinguishes his flame. The old Demon King has that age and experience that I think means he has developed a winning hot dog eating strategy. He is a demon though and born from chaos, which means that his strategy is to cram his face hole, and he would probably more than likely win due to this. The old Demon King would be one of the worst in terms of competition but would decimate his foes whether it be by eating more hot dogs or by swinging his great hammer at them. I think that he would eat somewhere around 200 extra crispy hot dogs. So I think the old Demon King is good for winning but bad at being a fair competitor. For that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place him into the B tier. So now we move on to the bright colored two sword wielding Pontiff Sullivan. Now the old Pontiff was once in a territory war with Dark Sun Gwendolyn. So immediately I know that Sullivan has the competitive mindset that is needed to win. He would want to win a hot dog eating contest so he could be known as a superior and a ruler because eating some hot dogs is the determining factor in that kind of thing. Would Pontiff Sullivan really care for the taste or have the appetite to eat an extreme amount of hot dogs though? I mean, I think so. He's aggressive and seems to be capable of eating furiously just like he does with his unrelenting attacks against the Ashen One. Even after losing to Aldrich, he maintained his status and held his head up high. And so I think he has some form of sportsmanship as well. Pontiff Sullivan would eat something semi-realistic in terms of the amount of hot dogs eating in 10 minutes. So I'm thinking something along the lines of 90 hot dogs, which is definitely a winner. With all that being said, Pontiff Sullivan seems more than capable of smoking the competition in a well-mannered fashion. So he's gonna be the first that I'm gonna place all the way at the top into the S tier. Thank you. 
So up next is the Onion Knight's old friend, Yorm the Giant. Now, Yorm is one of the best bosses in terms of sportsmanship for this competition. Yorm gave people around him giant slaying weapons just in case he were to ever come back to life. He was the sole sword and shield of the people he protected. Once the profane flame came to be and was going for all the humans, Yorm became a lord of cinder and put it to rest. Yorm just screams out sportsmanship, and I think he would be great and a friendly competitor due to this. He has a giant face and therefore a giant mouth, so that means he can easily throw more hot dogs in there and eat faster than any competition. I think Yorm seems like a giant with a huge appetite and would have no conundrum eating all of those franks. Yorm would eat an astounding amount of hot dogs too, somewhere around like 500 hot dogs. So of course, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna follow up and give Yorm the giant the highest tier and place him into the S tier. So now we move on to one of the grossest bosses in Dark Souls 3, Aldrich, Devourer of Gods. He literally started off as a way of white cleric who indulged in consuming other humans, so much so that he became grotesque and his body became melted sludge. Aldrich then moved on to Greater Beings, which is where he got his fantastic name. Now, of course, we know that Aldrich is capable of eating. There is no denying that. But he is one of the worst when it comes to sportsmanship, as he would finish his hot dog platter and while waiting on another one, decide to say hello to the competition next to him. Aldrich is competitive as he wanted to just get bigger and stronger and take over pretty much everything. But at the cost of the safety of fellow competitors, I find that Aldrich would have some complications. He would eat an amazing amount though, let's say 650 hot dogs, 8 competitors, and the announcer as well. With all that being said, I will keep Aldrich, Devourer of Gods, out of S tier due to the sportsmanship, but I will go ahead and give him A tier. We move on to a subjugated warrior of Sullivan, the dancer of the Boreal Valley. Now, she is a direct descendant of Guinevere and was given some sweet swords and told to defend Priestess Emma. Now, just look at the dancer. She is sleek and slender and has one of the coolest fighting styles throughout the franchise. To me, I find that she would despise the taste and competition that is derived from a hot dog eating contest, claiming that it is too gluttonous and depraved to compete in. Even when the Ashen One comes to her and she is frenzied by wearing a ring of Pontiff, I think she would still have the sense to say no to the competition. So with that, she would of course be eating a grand total of zero hot dogs and would just drink a glass of water in defiance. And of course, with that being said, I will go ahead and place Dancer of the Boreal Valley all the way at the bottom into the F tier. Now we move on to a literal suit of armor that is controlled by a bunch of butterflies, the Dragon Slayer armor. There's literally no body inside that armor. It is just a controlled set of armor that moves thanks to the pilgrim butterflies found throughout Lothric Castle. So it can either deceive during the competition and just hide its hot dogs inside the armor and no one would know better, or it could just not compete at all since I do not think the pilgrim butterflies would care all that much. For the sake of the video, we'll just say that it hides hot dogs inside the armor. That's really all there is to it. Not really competitive, it just wants to help the butterflies reach the top of Lothar Castle. So if it did compete, it would probably hide around 150 hot dogs in that armor. Maybe 200 if it really compacts them all. And then the judges notice the armor is hollow once they shake its hand and then discover that and it's disqualified. So I am going to place the Dragon Slayer armor all the way at the bottom and place it into the F tier. Next up is the King of Lothric, Osiris, the Consumed King. Now, this king became super into dragons and was infatuated with Seath the Scaleless and literally became a dragon himself. Now, Osiris only really cares about making a worthy sacrifice to the first flame and is why he keeps talking about his youngest child. Now, that just means to me he doesn't have the time or patience to consume some hot dogs for his honor and pride as he literally abandoned his kingdom just to take care of his one sacrificial lamb. Osiris would have to somehow be forced to want to eat hot dogs, maybe stating that the hot dogs would be suitable sacrifices to the first flame or something. But otherwise, he's too far gone and too mad. Osiris would consume, I think, about 12 hot dogs, but only do so if he is literally starving and would keep one to try and feed to his child. So I'm going to have to place Osiris, the consumed king, into the D tier keeping him out of the F tier because he can at least eat something. So now we go back to Gunder before he becomes a coiled sword sheath, where he is champion Gunder. Now let's note a major difference between this version and his later version. He doesn't become a puss of man this time. He doesn't have a giant snake for a mouth protruding from him, and therefore he wouldn't eat as much as he would, but he would instead be a little bit more sportsmanlike. So we take the good with the bad and find that he's just a giant guy who beats up the Ashen One with a giant halberd, and doesn't really need anything else. 
Champion Gunder is a good guy that was just late to a party where in turn led to a time where the Firelink Shrine was not lit. I find that Champion Gunder is basically just a big guy who could eat a lot and is in good spirits, but I'm not too entirely sure if he has the capability to actually take the place of the legendary Joey Chestnut. I find that Champion Gunder would eat something pretty well, maybe around 60 hot dogs. With all that being said, I am going to place Champion Gunder a tier below his Puss of Man version and go ahead and place him into the B tier. Up next, we have the two Prince brothers, Lorian, Elder Prince, and Lothric, Younger Prince. Now, thanks to their father, their souls are basically infused with one another and made them inseparable. Now, of course, that means there's two mouths to feed and they could eat up hot dogs in succession with one another, which is a pretty big positive. Of course, we have to note that both of them are sickly, so they may not have as big of an appetite as the rest of the competition, but they do have each other and they do have better sportsmanship than most. Maybe Lorian could eat as much as he wants and then is revived by Lothric or something to continue eating after he passes out. I find that the Prince brothers would eat a combined 40 hot dogs though, mainly due to their ailments and such. As for their ranking, I find that Lorian and Lothric should be placed into the C tier. They wouldn't be the best or the worst. I think they'd just be pretty much right in the middle. So now we just have another big old dragon, the Ancient Wyvern. I mean, in terms of lore, there really isn't much, but let's be real. It would eat anything and everything once again, but this time on a much grander scale and would scorch everything before eating them, including the perfectly made hot dogs. I mean, that's, that's really about it. I think the Ancient Wyvern would eat something like 800 charred hot dogs, the local farm animals, part of the stage, and whatever else it could really find. So with the non-existent sportsmanship, the non-competitive attitude, and the insatiable appetite, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place the Ancient Wyvern into the B tier. So now we move on to the Storm Drake riding firstborn son of Gwyn, the Nameless King. So the Nameless King was the one who inherited An Orlando all those years ago, but was shunned once he allied with the Ancient Dragons. But once again, we do have two mouths, the King himself and his Storm Drake, who he considers a brother in arms. The Nameless King is one cool customer and seems to have great sportsmanship as he was removed from Gwyn's family, but still left a blade and ring on Gwyn's empty tomb. He seems to also be pretty decent in competitiveness as he does go through countless battles and such, leading a warrior's life and wanting to do battle. I think the Nameless King would be capable of downing a few hot dogs, but also could have his Storm Drake eat some as well without doing anything to the competitors or the stage. I find that their combined total would be something like 250 hot dogs, with 50 going to the King and 200 to the Storm Drake. So I find that the Nameless King would be an excellent champion on consuming Franks. And so I'm going to go ahead and give him high honors and place him into the S tier. So now we have the final boss of the main game, the Soul of Cinder. Uh, the Soul of Cinder is the manifestation of all those who have previously linked to the First Flame, which means it could just have one mean appetite. But it is just a husk containing the souls of those who have linked, not the actual manifestation of the Lords of Cinder. So he wouldn't have too much of an appetite, if any at all. He is the ultimate test, though, to see if anyone is worthy to once again link the First Flame. So we know that sportsmanship and competitiveness are at least present. The Soul of Cinder is a creature with many souls, but not the appetite to eat the amount of hot dogs necessary to be a champion. I think the Soul of Cinder, with its larger frame, would still be able to somehow eat in the neighborhood of uh, about 40 hot dogs. So with all that being said, I think that the Soul of Cinder has good sportsmanship and can at least present something of a worthy challenge to the other glizzy guzzlers. So I am going to place him dead center and go ahead and place the Soul of Cinder into the C tier. So now let's move on to the DLC bosses. First up on this list, we have Sister Freed and Father Arendale, where who could forget the first time you beat her second phase and you're just shocked to learn that she in fact has a third phase? Sister Freed does show her sportsmanship and courtesy, kindly asking the Ashen One to leave her painted world. She just wanted to protect the flame and her hot dog eating partner, Father Arendale, and that's all right. She does show great values of being well-mannered though, and so I think she would eat each individual hot dog with a fork and knife, while Father Arendale would eat hot dogs like a champion. With their combined strength, I think that Father Arendale would eat 35 hot dogs, while Sister Freed would eat like two, combining for 37 hot dogs. Now, I think they would be pretty average overall, and so I'm going to follow up, and I'm going to place Sister Freed and Father Arendale into the C tier. So now we move on to the Grave Tenders of the Undead Match Champion, the Champion's Grave Tender and Grave Tender Great Wolf. The Champion of the Undead Match did go mad, and now the young boy and his wolf who trained under him protect the Grave's sanctity. Now, their lore is pretty much just that. 
Can a normal sized human and their giant wolf hold their own and eat an exorbitant amount of hot dogs in a 10 minute span? I think that the wolf does most of the work and they have their same mentality and sportsmanship as the Nameless King and his Storm Drake, but I do not think that they would eat as many hot dogs, especially the Grave Tender. I think their combined total would be around 60 hot dogs, which isn't quite as many as the legendary Joey Chestnut. And so with all that being said, they seem to be great, but not perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place the Champions Grave Tender and Grave Tender Great Wolf into the A tier. So now we move on to the Demon Bros, the Demon in Pain and Demon from Below. I mean, they're simply just demons that are the last alive born from the Chaos Flame, where one will be reborn into the Demon Prince. But as for the two of them, they will simply have one big demonic appetite. Once again, go berserk onto the crowd and whatnot. It really does fall under that again, even for the one that becomes a Demon Prince. Now, their combined total would be like 550 hot dogs, and of course, just a few members of the crowd that were being dressed as mustard bottles. With that being said, I'll just go ahead and place the Demon in Pain and Demon from Below into the B tier. Put their platters just a little further away from everyone else and they'll be okay. We move on to the PvP battle boss, Half-Light, Spear of the Church. So for online players such as myself, this boss is basically just a boss fight where another player is the literal boss. So for this video, I'll just rank how well I think a typical Ashen one can fare in a hot dog eating contest. I find that the typical Ashen one is somewhat fair in competitive spirit, even though we use too many methods to cheese a boss we can't beat. I think that a typical Ashen one is hungry, but is not hungry enough or has the method down to eat a grand amount of francs. A typical Ashen one just seems to be meh in pretty much every hot dog eating regard. I think Half-Light aka a typical Ashen one would eat a maximum of 15 hot dogs. And so with that, Half-Light Spear the Church seems to be pretty poor in a hot dog eating contest and therefore I will bestow them the rank of D tier. It isn't bad enough to place them in the very bottom. Following up, we have the dragon who is raised to fight back against the abyss. We have Dark Eater Madir. I mean, basically, the entirety of its lore is that it was raised to fight the abyss until it too became at least partially corrupted by the abyss, but is still an immortal being. He is a pretty big fellow, and as such means he has the capability to consume more francs than the average competitor. He also seems honorable and fair, as he did perform his task of fighting the abyss until he just became too damaged by it. Basically, I find Dark Eater Madir to have better sportsmanship than that of the Ancient Wild while still having the stomach to eat. Even with the Abyssal Corruption, I think he would be pretty capable of containing it and raising up the champion's belt once he whoops up the competition. Dark Eater Madeer would consume a pretty grand amount of hot dogs. I'm thinking somewhere around 700 hot dogs. And with that, I think that Dark Eater Madeer deserves to be placed in the peak of glizzy consumers and shall be placed all the way at the top into the S tier. So now we have the final candidate on this tier list, who is Slave Knight Gale, a knight with a hunger for some Dark Souls. Gale is just an undead who has been around for a long, long time and is assigned with the task of gathering Dark Souls and returning to the painted world with them. Now Gale, being the Chad-like being he is, has been loyal and searching for years, if not decades, if not centuries, which is the ultimate example of sportsmanship. He does have an appetite for, well, you know, but maybe he can substitute that with some old Franks. Slave Knight Gale has a pretty atypical stomach to me, which in turn means he could eat some more. I'm thinking something along the lines of like 70 hot dogs, which is definitely good. So to end this list, I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna place Slave Knight Gale into the A tier. He definitely seems like a pretty solid choice. And with that, we once again meet the end. We now know the greatest truth throughout Lothric, answering the profound question of which Dark Souls 3 bosses would be the greatest choice in a hot dog eating contest. Now tune in next week where we discuss another question once again that is plaguing everyone's minds on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, if you did enjoy this video, I will go ahead and ask you to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, adios.